Welcome everyone. I am so delighted that you are here with me today and I want to thank the people who called in and suggested today's topic. This is fabulous. I am always delighted to talk about gratitude because as an empath you are going to automatically be deeply grateful. Your problem is not that you are are forgetting to be grateful or uh, don't uh, express your gratitude well. Your difficulty is going to be that you can sense the energy, the feelings, the emotional climate in the room and you may take on responsibility that doesn't belong to you and try to fix it and that can get you into a place where you are expressing gratitude almost backward now the reason that i want to share this with you is because when i first discovered gratitude or the practice of gratitude i was pretty early on in my spiritual journey and I was in a very precarious financial situation and so I was looking for anything that would solve the problem. I was coming at everything from a place of desperation rather than a place of confidence and certainty. So I grabbed hold of gratitude. I was sure that was the missing link. That was the thing that I wasn't doing right. And it became this incredible journey that didn't end it up in abundance, but taught me so much. So I've got a couple of notes about what I want to share with you today about gratitude. First of all, does it guarantee abundance? Is it beneficent? Should you just be grateful for everything? So we want to look at why gratitude is not the cure-all. Why it's not necessary to be grateful for everything. And what sincerity will do for you in terms of making gratitude be effective. And then how your focus brings more. So let's dive more deeply into this as always i love and honor all of your comments and questions so please go right ahead and ask whatever questions that you may have but please let's stay on uh, the subject and that is gratitude and abundance so going back all these years to my original introduction to the idea of gratitude even though I was very good about saying thank you for everything and probably going way overboard about how honored and grateful I was for somebody doing even the smallest thing I as I said earlier was desperate to find the solution for getting out of my precarious financial situation. How could I receive abundance instead of lack upon lack upon lack upon lack? So when gratitude dropped in my lap, I was sure that this was the magic cure-all. And I misunderstood what the person was sharing. In my mind, that person that was writing about gratitude and explaining what their situation had been I misinterpreted and believed that the person was saying to me, you must be grateful for everything. Now on the surface, that doesn't raise any red flags. Gratitude is a wonderful thing. Yes, we should be grateful for everything. Hold on, take a breath and take a step back. Can we truly and with heart resonance be grateful for the things that we don't want? 
to me, it felt like living a lie. I wasn't grateful for being in this situation. I could be grateful for learning how to get out of the situation, but I could not be grateful in that moment for the situation of lack. And so while I was busy saying, oh, I'm so grateful that I only have a couple of dollars in my wallet and I need to go grocery shopping, I was creating underneath a huge layer of resentment because I was really lying to myself, trying to dress it up as though I was grateful. So I was busy saying, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. But subconsciously, I was really broadcasting energetically, I'm so resentful. I am horribly resentful that I am supposed to be grateful for not enough. Now, what happened? Well, it didn't get me a whole lot of abundance. It did not magically make life, my life better. It actually put me further and deeper into the hole because I wasn't being in alignment with the spirit of gratitude. So let's look at what I could have done instead. First of all, if you are saying one thing with your mouth and feeling something different with your heart, just like I was. I was speaking about gratitude. And in the meantime, I was deeply resentful for having to be in this situation. And I was looking everywhere but in as a way to change this situation. I was taking responsibility. Oh, I'm not grateful enough. But I wasn't willing to change my attitude and look and see, okay, this doesn't line up. This doesn't make sense. I am trying to convince myself that I am grateful for these couple of dollars when I really need quite a bit more. So I'm lying to myself. I'm trying to trick the universe into believing that what I am saying is really what I am feeling. Now we have to remember the universe doesn't speak a language like we all share. It speaks energy. So I was broadcasting feelings of resentment and speaking words of gratitude. The universe doesn't hear my voice. It doesn't interpret my words it examines the feeling that I am broadcasting and delivers to me something that will match that feeling. So I was busy getting more things to be resentful about. Every once in a while, there were things that I was truly grateful for and I could get really excited about being grateful. And that was a wonderful thing. But most of the time, I was focused on all of these things that I was supposed to be grateful for that I didn't feel good about. That was consuming all of my attention, taking up all of the space in my mind, and really causing a lot of churning up in my heart. So we don't want to be grateful for everything. We want to be grateful for those things that really are in alignment with what we desire. And that automatically is going to be in alignment with your highest good. We need to remember that God is good and good is God. So if it's not good, you are not aligning with your highest good, with the universal support. You're out in over here in the, the ego 
dimension trying to pretend that this is something that the universe has brought to you, that the divine have sanctioned, and you're trying to pretend that it feels good. It's so much better to really be in a place that does feel good rather than be in this pretend place where all of this stuff is rolling around in your heart. So, first thing we want to remember is be grateful for those things that you truly desire. If you don't feel it, don't pretend. Find something that you can be grateful for. Sincere gratitude. Something that really, truly feels good. And get excited. Go over the top. Get all delighted by that. Now, this is a good time for you to bring out a gratitude journal. If you don't have one, get started. Seeing things that you are sincerely grateful for written down in your handwriting. And I always suggest that you write by hand rather than type these kinds of things. When you write by hand, you are creating new neural pathways. You are saying to your brain, you are hardwiring into your heart, I like this. I'm grateful for this. Give me more of this. So write by hand a, in a gratitude journal all of the things that truly feel good to you. Do not put in there, I hope so, maybe, I wish so, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. We're smarter than that. Please don't get caught up in that kind of game. Instead, play to win by being sincere and writing down things that you really do feel good about. It can be really basic if you're just getting started and you feel like nothing in your life is working. I am grateful for the flowers. I am grateful for the air that I'm breathing. I am grateful that whatever feels good. So it would be inappropriate to say, I'm grateful for my physical body. If you are currently in a uh, healing modality, if something is wrong with your physical body and you are really struggling, being grateful for your physical body again may feel like lying. If your hands are working really well, you could say, I'm so grateful for my hands. But if you are recovering from, let's just say, a stomach condition, you would not say, I am so grateful for my stomach being so good at digesting, because that would be lying. You can say, I am so delighted that my stomach is healing. My stomach is continuing to improve. And when you really get a hold of that, switch it to complete present tense and say, I am so grateful that I am healed. But if you're all the way over here and you need to get here, don't start here and feel like, oh, I'll never make it. Start here with what you can do and allow yourself to gradually get closer and closer until you've gotten to the place where you can really be grateful for the condition being in its ideal state. Okay, so remember too that keeping a gratitude journal or doing anything that you are looking to, to use as a tool to move you forward, to move you closer to what is wanted. It's not a punishment. So if you don't feel good about it, if you just can't do it, if it feels really awful, take a breath, put it away, and when you can feel good about it, return to 
whatever it was that you were wanting to put down in your gratitude journal. If the idea of keeping a journal, writing in it frequently, really bothers you, find another way to express gratitude. Please don't put yourself in a position where resentment is really what you're feeling and sending out into the universe and yet you're busy trying to trick yourself, the universe, and everyone around you by pretending that this is something that you really do desire. It just doesn't work. The universe is not stupid, but it is also not a conscious body in the sense that it interprets what you are sending out decides whether or not you really want it and sends you something that you do want in place of what you may be asking for. It is reflexive. You send out, it returns to you something similar. Just a reflective body that is like a, almost a boomerang. You put good out, you get good back. You put bad out, you get bad back. It is not punishment. It is simply the law of cause and effect in action. So you want to only write when you want to. Only write what you are truly grateful for and what you can put down with sincerity. And please, please stay away from shame, gratitude. I often see many, many posts that will say, I was sad that I had no shoes. And some, it's not always this, it could be uh, many other things. Um, I was sad that I had no shoes until I saw the man with no feet. Please stop getting on the shame train to get to a place that feels good. Every time I read one of those, I don't feel better. I'm not delighted that I have no shoes. I feel disturbed by the fact that there is someone that doesn't have feet and it lowers my vibration. It doesn't raise my vibration. And if we want to be in a state of abundance, which is your birthright, you are going to need to keep yourself in a high vibration because that's the place where you will be able to receive what it is that you desire. God stays in a high vibrational place of love, joy, and peace. The ego can drag us down into places of negativity and shame and blame. But remember, just like the boomerang, negativity goes out, negativity comes back. Love goes out, love comes back. Be in the place of love and joy so that you will be able to receive from the universal cause and effect law, love and joy in return. So now let's take a look at making sure that you are overflowing. One of the most important things that you can do is remember where you live. Remember that you live in an overflowing universe, in a place of plenty. There is more than enough for absolutely everyone. So move away from feeling like you need to compete or take from someone or beat them in some way in order to have enough for you. That doesn't feel good to the empathic personality and it's going to make you start sabotaging yourself because you don't feel good or proud of what you're doing. So remember, 
you live in an abundant universe. There's more than enough for everyone. So all you are doing by getting into a place of joy is receiving your portion of the more than enough. And everyone who does as you do can also receive their more than enough. So remember, live in the universe that's overflowing with abundance and expect to receive and be grateful before, during, and after. If you are expecting to receive, it will be easy to be grateful. Oh, I'm so excited that I am going to get paid on Friday because Friday is my payday. That's easy. Be as certain of your payday. I'm sorry, be a, a, as certain of the thing that you are desiring to receive as you are of your payday or whatever time you get money and you know that that money is guaranteed. Act with certainty. We want to imitate the Christ. And in this particular case, the Christ that is most clearly demonstrated to all of us is Jesus, who came to show us that we could all receive Christ consciousness in this lifetime and embody it to our benefit and to the benefit of everyone around us. So in one uh, passage, and I, I don't know which one, so if you know, you're welcome to put it in the comments, but Jesus looks up at heaven and says, Father, I thank you for hearing me. And then he says something along the lines of, well, I know you hear me always, but I said that just for those who were listening, who would understand that it is so important to say thank you with certainty of receiving. Jesus never walked around saying, I hope so. It was always, I know so. Begin expressing gratitude from a place of certainty. Of course I'm going to receive this. I'm so grateful for all of this abundance that is flowing to me at this time. Come from gratitude. It will absolutely increase your ability to receive. Certainty, not surprise. And remember, certainty attracts. Being unsure repels. You are pushing away whatever it is that you were hoping to call to you. I am so delighted that I'm going to be receiving this. Oh, I am totally in line with that. My heart is open. I am able to really put myself in the place where I'm able to receive. I hope so. Oh, I'm not even in my heart. Now my gut is churning. My head is bringing up all sorts of things about why it won't work. And I have cut myself off. I have repelled that good that was on its way to me just a few minutes ago. I also want you to remember to be so careful with your focus. Remember, focus is like the magnifying glass. If you want to magnify your impact and your possibility to receive, put your focus on it. While I was busy focused on everything that I didn't like about the fact that I only had a few dollars and I had to go to the grocery store, I was actively repelling any possibility that I was going to receive more money before I went to the grocery store. And I kept replaying that over and over and over again, focused on, oh, I gotta be grateful for these couple of dollars when I was really saying, I wish I had $100 to go to the grocery store and buy all the food that my family needs for the week. It would have been so much better if I said, well, I'm grateful for everything that I have been able to buy in the past and that I will be able to buy today. 
That I could sincerely agree with. But if I am coming from the place where I am lying to myself, then I am actively repelling. I am placing my focus on what is unwanted. And then I am attracting unwanted and repelling the desires of my heart. I am also not telling the truth about what my heart desires. My heart was desiring abundance, but I had not done the work of clearing and healing my heart. So I was really so caught up in resentment and shame and blame that I wasn't able to really get in alignment with the heart. So remember too, you must do the work of empowerment by clearing and healing your heart, releasing that resentment and shame and blame. It makes it so much easier to live in joy when you're not carrying around heavy burdens of pain. Now, before we finish, and I've got just a few more minutes. So before we finish, I want to give you three examples of how you can do gratitude correctly. It is so important to really get in the spirit of it and be able to empower yourself and your energetic vibration. But it's also so easy to get confused with all of the teaching that is out there. So I'm going to give you three examples of a way that you could do it correctly, as opposed to what I may have done in the past or what you may be engaging in right now. And if you have any questions about it, please drop a comment and let's make sure that you are really understanding that gratitude is a powerful, powerful tool to help you manifest what you desire if you have allowed yourself to speak from the truth and be in alignment with the good that is just waiting to find you. So, pretending is never going to make it happen. If you are trying to actively ignore a problem or pretend that you love the problem, you can ignore that the problem exists and focus on the good thing and that will be effective and get really excited about the good thing that is in your life. But if you look at the problem and pretend that you like it when you don't, you are causing yourself a really, really big problem. And I am not saying that to be critical. This is something I learned with great difficulty. So let's take a look. And the first example that we want to use is money or abundance. So you would not want to say, I'm so grateful that I have a few dollars to go to the grocery store with. Or I'm so grateful uh, that I got another bill in the mail. Or I'm so grateful that it's still two weeks to payday. There's resentment underneath each one of those statements. So you need to turn it around. If you did just get a bill, whether it's expected or unexpected, it doesn't matter. I want you to look at that bill and just take a look, acknowledge that it's there, and then just say, I am grateful for all of the bills that I've been able to pay in the past. You are now stating affirmative, affirmative, affirmatively, <laughs> doesn't sound right. You are now stating with conviction and affirming that you have been able to meet this obligation in the past. 
that is setting you up to feel good that it's very likely that you will be able to meet it in the future. So now you are heading into this situation feeling like, yeah, I can do this instead of, oh no, another bill. You're getting yourself into alignment with the place that the answer or the solution is instead of lining up with the problem. So I'm so grateful for all of the bills that I've been able to pay in the past. I am absolutely certain I will manifest the money to pay this. If you've done it before, it's easy to feel that you will do it again. I'm so blessed. I am have been able to pay so many bills in the past. This is just one more that I will easily be able to pay. You can feel good about that whole statement. I am grateful for all of the money that is coming into my life. If money has come into your life before, you can be grateful for money that is continuing to come in. If no money has come in for years, that's going to feel really not so great to say, I'm so grateful. I am grateful that I am lining up with the energy of abundance. And then go look around at all of the places where the energy is abundant. The trees, the grass, the cars, the flowers, the animals. Don't try to trick yourself. Instead, find something that is sincere and go with that. Now let's look at love and relationships. Well, if you just had a really heartbreaking situation occur to you, then I don't want you to say, oh, I'm so grateful I got dumped. Well, if this, the split was mutual and you knew it needed to come, you could say, well, I am grateful for all that relationship brought into my life and I'm grateful to move on. But if you are hurting, if you really felt a kinship with this other person and they didn't feel it for you, you would just be lying. So instead you want to say, I am grateful for my loving heart, even if it hurts. I'm still grateful that I am able to love. If you can do that, if you are not there yet, find something that is true for you and say that. Now, what about attracting your divine partner? I am so grateful that I am attracting my divine partner. I am so grateful. My divine partner is here for me now. Don't put it in the present tense. If it feels like, oh yeah, oh yeah, mm, sure. That's just going to screw it up. Allow it to be, I am so excited, so delighted, so grateful that my partner is on their way to me. Something like that, that you can get in alignment with is so much better than w if you add three dots to the end and say, yeah, right, like that'll ever happen. That is not a good use of the power of gratitude. Now let's take a look at the last one, which is health. If you're in perfect health, it is a wonderful thing to say, I'm so grateful for my well-being, for my physical vitality, for my wonderful health. That can be something that you can write in your gratitude journal if it's true. But if you've just been given a diagnosis and you know that you are going to be going on a healing journey, if you truly can get excited and feel grateful for this new chapter in your life, then it's acceptable to say, well, I'm really excited and grateful for this healing journey. 
for this opportunity to find out that my body is capable of wellness or for uh, this new opportunity for me to really um, experience even more vibrant well-being but again we used before the stomach uh, incident so let's use that again if you just got a diagnosis of um, a stomach ulcer you don't want to start saying I'm so grateful for this ulcer because it hurts it's painful it's going to require you changing some things to uh, help it heal and you may not be delighted to get that diagnosis but you can say I am grateful for every part of my body that is working really well I am grateful for my body's natural ability to heal I am grateful for all of the medicine and the different ways whether it is alternative or traditional medicine I am grateful for all of the remedies that are of, are here for me to use so that my body will be completely healed now if you feel that you're really grateful for this ulcer because it's going to force you to make some changes that you might have been dragging your feet on and you can sincerely say I am so grateful for this ulcer because it's going to take me to the place that I have desired to be and haven't been able to motivate myself to go to. That would be using gratitude effectively. effectively. But remember, it must be sincere. Speak from your heart. Be in alignment with good because the divine are good. God is only good. So if it's not good, it's not from the divine and you don't want it anyway. So let go of that shame and blame and resentment. Get in there and heal your heart. Let your life be transformed. It's going to be the most beautiful gift you could ever give yourself. And now I'm looking at the time and I've got to go to spend time with my incredible beings in my counseling group and you are all invited to take a look at my website and decide whether you feel like becoming part of a spiritual community that will help you heal your heart and transform your life is something that would appeal to you as well so this is dr marsha martin the heart healer I want to thank you so much for being here. I want to encourage you to continue practicing gratitude the right way by staying focused on what you do want, expressing sincere gratitude, and just letting go of shame and blame. So until next time, I'm sending you all my love and my deepest gratitude. Thanks so much.